Stuttering John Melendez Roundtable Discussion. Welcome to Point Dabble Point, a weekly discussion where we get caught up on the week in Stuttering John, glare at delivery people through the window, and have people arrested for writing on a bathroom stall. I'm Carl Hamburger, and with me this week, from Who Are These Broadcasters and the Blattcast, Christian Blatt is here. Oh, hello there. Welcome oh, to the stream. It's a very offensive picture behind you of uh, Carl. Well, uh, I have to yeah, I shout that. out my my friend Eric Connor, aka Count Connor, uh, in the chat. He uh, wanted to do a, a Photoshop. That is, I am at Stevie Tomatoes. That is a wanted photo on the wall. wall. Oh, I, that and, makes sense. And uh, of course, we've got uh, Cardiff wearing a shirt that says "Fuck the Bills." So. Oh, I thought it was just one of Cardiff's spies who was at Stevie Tomatoes yesterday. I didn't know it was actually Cardiff <laughs> was himself. That- that makes Actual more Cardiff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a I, short I heard, drive from Minnesota. I heard he was driving by John's house in a convertible, too. So that actually makes <laughs> a lot of sense. Also, from Who Are These Podcasts and the All Apologies Podcast, Andy Q Public is here. What's up, Andy? Hey, what's going on? Let's talk shit. All that. Let's talk shit. And finally, the producer of Who Are These Podcasts, producer Chris. Oh, hello. Thanks for having oh. me. Dude, thanks for being here. Guys, we're late. Let me explain what happened. I was all ready to go. We are getting everyone prepped 10 minutes before showtime. Producer Chris says, oh, my internet's not working. And it was not. So he goes, Carl, I'll just come over. And before I could say, nope, don't do that, he was off. So I tried to completely reset up my studio. I haven't done a show down here since our live show in Largo. I don't have anything set up. So I turned everything around, tried to get it working, and it's not working. So I have a, a broken component or something. Something's not working. We, we did a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of running around. I think someone had a pogo stick out. Nothing seemed to work. I defied all laws of traffic getting here. I just want to say, but you did get here very quickly. It was impressive. <laughs> all of so the now, coat hangers, all the coat hangers and tin foil couldn't put Carl's studio back together again. <laughs> it was crazy. So now producer Chris is upstairs in my Live. dining room. Yes, and uh, we'll we'll figure this out. We have a lot to get to. Of yeah. course, I say this every time on Point Dabble Point, and I'm never lying about. It. I'm never exaggerating. A lot has happened. In the past week, it's actually been two weeks since our last point, dabble point. And a lot has happened in the world of Stuttering John that we need to get to because this is the weekly roundtable. We get everyone caught up on the week that was with Stuttering John. And I have to start with the biggest thing that happened midweek this week. And that is, of course, Stevie Tomatoes Gate. <laughs> and I believe that this is uh, what Christian Blatt is referencing here with the wanted poster. So. Stuttering John goes to take a shit CB tomatoes. And you gotta love John too. Whenever he does something that's he considers embarrassing, he always says, I never do this, but like yeah. just today I was watching his show and he goes, <laughs> I was on Dabble's Anonymous today, which I never do. Jen, you reference it every episode. Or you're on it all the time. Your, your whole show is you scrolling through it and the video's auto playing. We know you go a lot. Yes, you go there a lot. So it's fine. It's not a big deal. So he goes, um, he goes, normally I just take one shit a day, says the guy with hemorrhoids. <laughs> protruding from his underpants it's like yeah i only only shit once a day but this one time i had to take uh, a second shit so i'm at stevie tomatoes i go in the bathroom stall and there is written on the bathroom stall. i took a photo of it f a f s j f k b right so he's not sure if i wrote it or someone else wrote it there's other dabblers in in cape coral believe it or not could mean anything honestly could mean anything sure so then he has uh, Vince, the lawyer, who's dead to him, who will never talk to again, mark my words, on his show this week. And because John's so stupid, he believes everything he wants to believe. Vince goes, oh, I've seen Carl's handwriting. That's the way he writes S's. And John goes, that's all the proof I need. So case he, closed. Case closed. So then he turned me into the manager at uh, Stevie Tomatoes, apparently. And I am uh, banned for life. Yeah. The manager also said, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know what? Actually, I don't normally play videos out here, but this one's so funny that I kind of want to play this. Let me uh, share my screen real, real quick. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this video. This is in Dabbler's Anonymous. Someone found this. Well, we know John didn't see it because he never goes there. That's correct. Yeah. John, John would never go to nope. Dabbler's Anonymous to see what's doing in there. Those fucking things connected. <laughs> there we go. Now there's the microphone. I don't know why it doesn't connect automatically, but because you're a retard. So anyway, um, I went to Stevie Tomatoes yesterday. I talked to the manager who I love, 
and uh, <laughs> showed her the bathroom stall that Carl defaced. So I'll, I'll say this. I, I know John's being polite, but when you're a regular somewhere, you love the manager. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You yeah. might hang out there too long if you love the manager <laughs> at Stevie Tomatoes. Excuse me. So, you you know I love you. Come come with me for a second. I'd like to show you something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's in the men's room. Yeah. It's a, the bartender is the only woman that has ever had a drink with him that he's invited. <laughs> because she was already there. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get drinks sometime. Yeah, no, I, I don't have time for that, except for the bartender and Stevie Tomatoes, who's always there. All that Carl defaced the door <laughs> and showed over a picture of Carl, gave her Carl's address. She will be billing him here in Cape Carl for having to get a guy to come in and clean the Sharpie off. So this is what's funny about John. He's always threatening things that would be upsetting to him. Yeah. yeah. So the fact that She's going to be billing me for the cost of cleaning, cleaning Sharpie off a bathroom stall door. Yeah. They have to call it a specialist. Right. But th the idea yeah. that if John had to pay for someone to use a magic eraser, he would be like, well, there's no way I can afford that. So that would be very scary <laughs> to him. I, I don't know what the cost would be of cleaning Sharpie off a door. I imagine it's negligible, right? Yeah. It can't be. It's, it's literally much. one roll of gray paint just to go or that. It. Yep. Yeah. It's or one that. way to do it, you know, <laughs> but, but now, as you're I mentioned hook, now you're on the hook to pay for the cleanup of it. And then you're on the hook for the person that you paid to go do that. Right. Cause it obviously yeah. wasn't you. I don't see how you're on the hook for somebody else putting stickers on a bathroom door, but. <laughs> oh, Andy, it's so stupid. I mean, obviously I would never pay a bill that I got from Stevie tomatoes. I don't even have. <laughs> You guys have been out of my house. I don't even have a mailbox set up for it. You can't even deliver me an invoice <laughs> at that house. So good luck. What are you going to drop it in my yard? Hope oh, I find that, it. Well, you haven't got my letters. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> All right, let's see what else this dummy says. The bathroom door. Now, see, Lady K, you forget that Stevie Tomatoes has cameras. They have you going in and coming <laughs> out. Wait. This is the other thing. John's so stupid. He thinks that because we did a live show in Largo last weekend that I'm in Cape Coral. I am not. I have not <laughs> been in Cape Coral since February, John. So this idea that they have cameras showing me going in and out. I was in Stevie Tomatoes back in February. That is true. I doubt they still have the footage from that day. It'd be a I lot of see, footage to keep. I want to see the real dork who did it. Well, yeah, right. right. <laughs> well, and, and Carl, you did deface the bathroom back in February. Just nobody noticed it. Your defacement has already been washed away. So, you know, it's not even relevant. I put who are these podcast stickers uh, in the uh, right urinal. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I guess they didn't last because John didn't see those. <laughs> they know it was you. And that's how you make your S's. Nobody else makes them that way. <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> I've seen a lot of S's. <laughs> Nobody else makes them that way. Well, there's proof right there. You got me. And John's so smug right here. He, he couldn't be a dumber person. He just said the dumbest shit ever. And listen how he follows this up. You you done fucked up, brah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You're right, John. I didn't think this went all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> I have too much evidence behind. I done fucked up. You didn't know about hey. the cameras. Well, That's that too, problem. right? And I should have done my S's differently that time. Damn it. Yeah. And don't jerk off at Stevie Tomatoes. And I know she, evidence she, everywhere. I, I showed her the picture. I showed her boyfriend the picture. They know who you are. <laughs> they know what you're up to. You done fucked up, boy. I would, I would absolutely love to see the looks on these people's faces as John is showing them my photo. When they're like, look at their Sharpie in the, in the stall. They're like, yeah. It yeah. happens. I know who did it. Look at it. It's this, it's this guy right here. They're going, okay, John. Yeah, no, and we won't let him in. Uh, don't worry. He's bad for life. You got it. John showed him the cow bikini picture behind <laughs> Christian on his phone. Right. <laughs> this is the man. You know it's on his phone. Yeah. Uh, Carl, I have, a, I, I have another Photoshop uh, that I just tried to, if, if you can uh, put it up on the screen. This is uh, Carla Tomatoes, which is uh, sort of a, a remake of the Stevie Tomatoes mascot. Uh, you notice the frosted tips. I the do. Bills the Bills hat. hat. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you can start your own place. You can start uh, Carla's Tomatoes. Uh, I, again, shout out to Eric Connor, who was really busy on Photoshop this morning. <laughs> Stuttering John is banned for life from Carla's <laughs> Tomatoes. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
So these these thr- I love that he that's another thing that he thinks that I'd be upset about now out in Stevie Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why I avoid Stevie Tomatoes is not because I think I'm gonna get in trouble, it's because I think you might be there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a much better reason. Also the name. All right. So John's being a tattletale and a Karen, and it's embarrassing. He embarrasses himself with this shit, but he never realizes that. He always thinks that he's uh intimidating me and making me nervous which is hilarious yeah did so you get last... a chance to watch uh b dabbler's show last night yes. where they, they had the footage of so i was Donna just going to talk about fire. next yes oh, terrific so um last night on b dabbler there was someone who was at cape coral in stevie tomatoes at the same time that john was there they had a, a person infiltrating who got to witness john for about 30 minutes while he was there and he said that there was live music being played inside the establishment you could hear john yelling over the live music <laughs> as john's holding court he i open for Ozzy. yeah <laughs> he has to be the center of attention at all times so he's there uh screaming for some reason but yes they also showed that uh, after he was in the bathroom somebody left uh, a giant turd yeah. in one of the to- toilets that was not flushed down and then that guy put a bunch of stickers on the the bathroom door do you see that andy yeah so there was a uh what were the stickers he put on there a point devil point sticker a cardiff sticker yep. stiff minister <laughs> yeah yep so well, oh man this place they're gonna have to think, ban all dabblers from this place eventually. Do you think that when John hears that uh, the place he's planning on going is gonna have live music, he immediately grabs his out of tune guitar just in case they ask him to come up? Oh, I'm sure it's. Um, well, I was gonna say in his motorcycle. <laughs> that was another another story he told is how he had to go get salt for his water system, <laughs> so he went to Walmart to buy salt. And he was carrying out two 40 pound bags to put in his bike to drive back to the place. That just seems like a weight distribution issue, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't know. It's, I don't it's, know. It's, I mean, it, it, a wheelie it, the whole way home. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's almost like I, I think have to turn a corner. <laughs> it's almost like he doesn't actually have a motorcycle. I don't know. It's a crazy idea. I know but... uh, that rumor has been going around. <laughs> Jay Wolfenstein, two bucks. Missy B or we riot? No Missy B today. My apologies. Terry Lynn, I am new to the Devilverse. Can you explain it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I think that's Mike Morris's uh, ex. Morse code, Terry Lynn. BS show, jump the shark. Joe edits out. VTL equals lame. Oh, yeah. So this is uh, Vince. This is Vince the lawyer, and this is Vince the lawyer. Don't okay. worry, Vince. I'll give you your due today. We'll talk about what you did. Surviving the news. Can you send a pic of KCS pin or Terry Lynn, please? That's also Vince the lawyer. <laughs> Hold on. Let me do let me do the John thing. Oh, uh, Vince, you're rich. You can't get more than two bucks for a super chat. <laughs> Shoey Network. This is probably Vince the lawyer, too. Yeah. Uh, we apologize to BS fans. Vince the lawyer will be on the show on Monday. Yeah, that's Vince the yeah, lawyer. That's, that's the account that Vince used when we had Jackie Martling on, was that version okay. of the Shuley network yeah so and i was dumb enough to think it was really uh Shuley. i'm like oh why is he being such an asshole well you can vince. tell it's vince because people are pretending to give a shit about vince, about vince. <laughs> oh yeah that that's always the giveaway and, and it's not the same with reddit too anyone who's talking about vince the lawyer is vince the lawyer this is another one right here you better not get my divorce docs did you like you did sjs all right i'm sure you'll get them out there vince uh, Jay Wolfenstein, 10 bucks is Carol. You should provide John with a sample of your handwriting in the form of a roast letter, ripping him and his family a new one. You asked for it, John. Have fun with that analysis. Yeah, I know. The fact that anyone thinks they know what my handwriting, I don't know what my handwriting looks like. I type on a computer and a phone, <laughs> yeah. like an adult. I'm not sitting there penning long letters to people. Jay Wolfenstein, why so late? Napping again, Carl, you lose a boom. Damn, got me with that one. That's why Spectrum. Chris had to go over. Chris had to wake you up from your nap. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing we're going to talk about today is on the show today, John was once again replaying uh, the the famous mandolin nap video. And it's funny because John's not playing the video, but he's playing him watch the video the first time. And when you watch John watching John, when he saw it the first time, he didn't know what was interesting about it. <laughs> because unless Kevin Brennan explains to you that it's embarrassing, you have no idea. 
So, so when John's watching the first time, he's just like sitting there, like, oh. And now he's watching it again months later. He's going, oh. <laughs> so I, I, I you know get it fake. now. <laughs> yeah, right. That's how you know that it's it's very fake when that happens. All right, let's see uh, what else is going on over here. Jay Wolfenstein. If this is a plan to get me to send heckling super chats, it won't work. God damn it. These are all the chats that came in before we went live, and I apologize for that again. Jay Wolfenstein, two bucks. Just kidding. I'm from TSN. This is all fake. Oh, these are fake super chats. All right. I don't even know why I'm reading them then. Colonel Clink, two bucks, says, Carl, I appreciate your snark. Thank you. Bad at karate, two bucks. Not late enough, not gay enough. Thank you, bad at karate. We can always be later and gayer on this <laughs> channel over here. Barnes and Noobs, five bucks. Something I've noticed this week more than ever. Whenever SJ goes live, he always looks visibly different and is always terrible. <laughs> yes. In fact, I went ahead and grabbed a screenshot just from today's show since you brought that up. This is just from earlier today. The yeah. child looks terrible. <laughs> this is a man who is dying right here before our very eyes. And the other thing that happened this week, I was getting messages from people who couldn't believe it. John starts up a show. He's always surprised to see himself on the show. Even <laughs> though he's the one who sits down in front of his computer, turns on StreamYard, can see himself, hits go live, hits the theme music, and then goes, oh, shit, starts adjusting his hair and moving his camera. Well, this week, he looked at his hair. It looked terrible. So he left for 90 seconds and then came back with his hair combed. <laughs> We're at the beginning of his show. Like, just pretend your show starts five minutes earlier than it actually does and make all those adjustments before the show starts, before you hit go live. It's not difficult. Sorry, this is disturbing people. Let me get that off the screen. <laughs> By the way, it would be terrible if somebody created a YouTube account where they zoomed in at the top of his forehead and just were called, you know, John's new lesions or whatever that was there. Sorry. Oh, I was, God. His liver <laughs> spots that are yeah. coming in yeah. nicely. It's right there, right there at the top. <laughs> I'm not even sure what's going on now. Forgive me. I'm under the weather today. I didn't, I didn't allow Andy to come over to my house because I am not, not well. But, oh, you uh, use a but, tissue, not your shirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> la di da <laughs> Well, things have been going well lately, so I figured why not invest <laughs> in some Kleenex. But but Chris can come over because he's gotten his fifth booster, so it's okay if he comes over. But Andy still uh, doesn't believe in it. Oh, no one no one invited Chris over. Adam Davies <laughs> with five pounds. <laughs> says, I don't care that 99% of the chat says, I like Christian and Andy. Oh, wow. thanks, Adam. Thank you. See, the way you say it makes it seem like, oh, yeah, most people don't like it. Well, at least, at least I've got Andy. Usually it's just me. <laughs> All right. Vince the Warrior. Nobody get my divorce file from Bergen County, New Jersey. You know, Vince, I got to tell you, I, I mentioned this. I was on Uncle Rico today. Um, somebody pointed this out in Dabblers Anonymous. This whole universe was a lot more fun before Vince the Warrior got so involved in it. Because Vince started making everything personal, started getting these court filings and child support, the paperwork things involved. And then all of a sudden it got real personal and everyone's going after kids and families and shit. And we're all just having a good time. Vince doesn't know how to have a good time. So he has to dig up all this information and find photos of family members and send off all this shit. Unless you think anyone else is doing this. No, it's all just Vince and his many sock accounts. That's his idea of a this. good time. That is, yes. Michael C, producer, kick, 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 Chris. I'll give you a dollar to end, Carl. It's going to cost you at least three. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't do it for a buck. Thanks, buddy. Kelly Green, two bucks says, John said I was not doable, FSJ. What? <laughs> Kelly Green, you are so doable. How dare he? <laughs> Cowgirl Rider, two bucks. FSJ for posting pics of Shuli's kids. I don't think that that has happened. What am I missing with this thumbnail? It's the same... The, the last super chat and this one both have the same woman in the thumbnail. Oh, it's probably Vince the Warrior, and it's probably Mike's ex wife, if I had to guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? Uh, Bob's fake fool, two bucks says, but John dropped a deuce and didn't flush. Pick a veil. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. We saw that on uh, Be Dabbling Live last night. Although we don't know. So there's two things that were alleged in the episode last night. Yeah. The one is that John, he didn't ride his bike to the bar, but he was there yeah. with his other biker buddy. 
Yeah, got to ride home. <laughs> the, people are saying that he rode bitch to get back home. <laughs> Now, there's no photographic evidence of this, so I don't know if that happened. And the other one is that John is the one who shit up the toilet. And uh, they were showing that the toilet paper was underneath the shit. So they were trying to figure out how you would wipe your ass. I, I think that's called Chicago style. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but, yeah, whoever left the shit in the toilet, we don't know if it was John or not. We have no idea because he, he only shits once a day. So probably not him. Somebody so he, fucked it all he's up. Trained. He's trained at least in one thing. What's that? Magic shitting? Yeah. <laughs> Trains up the shit once a day. White Craig, five bucks. Did you see the Yelp review for CB Tomatoes? Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. I gotta, can somebody look that yeah, up? Yeah, I was going to say, I'll go dig around look, in there look right Look it now. up, Christian. Let's, yeah. Maybe you can read awesome. that for us. <laughs> Melissa Young gifted a Who Are These Podcast membership. Thank you very much, Melissa. I appreciate that. And... Uh, Nemorovsky, a member for nine months. VTL is an annoying night. Transmission bag it. Um, yeah, I agree with you very much. Thanks for being a member for nine months. Flex 316 from Australia. 100% not a real super chat. Oh, shit. Then why am I reading it? God damn it. The 495 Marauder, five bucks. NYU Howard Stern comedian, school teacher, actor, and musician. Night show and podcaster, all blown opportunities. Is there a bigger born loser? No. See, this is the, this is the thing that we've been talking about lately. John is one of those guys. We've all seen the shows about them. They win the lottery. They're lower class. They're working class. And now they've come across tens of millions of dollars. It never ends well. They never go, yeah, I made some good investments and now my family for generations and set for life. That's never the end story on this. They always blow all their money. They always fuck everything up. Yeah. And Suttering John is the exact same. He won the lottery. He was hired sight unseen because he had a stutter. And Howard Stern makes people interesting. Howard Stern is very good at running this reality show, radio show, that he makes all the different characters interesting in the context of the Howard Stern show. And then once they leave there, they're no longer interesting. Well, and except so, for except for Daniel Carver, but I agree. Everybody else is no longer interesting. <laughs> well, he might have been interesting to begin with, but <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. So so John won the lottery, got a ticket ticket to show business, turned that into a mansion and uh, you know, living the, the life out in LA and hanging out with the Kardashians and, and all his celebrity friends and everything. And he has squandered it all to the point where it'd be hard, it would be difficult to be as destitute as he is now for anyone else to have that much going for them and to lose it all. And then some Christian, did you find this review? I, I did. Yeah. If you want to share what's in there. So this is the top review. This okay. is the, if you, if you sort by newest from two uh, days ago. Yeah. From two days ago, food and drinks were great. But when I was there, a short drunk man came out of the men's bathroom yelling <laughs> something about someone named lady K putting graffiti on the bathroom door. I don't know what FKB and FSJ means, but he kept yelling it. He kept yelling that he used to be on some radio show and that he would sit in the audience of The Tonight Show, whatever that <laughs> means. Someone told us his name was Stuttering John, but I don't remember him being 5'4". <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That, that checks all the boxes. <laughs> you, know what I, you know what's great about this? So on Yelp, people can let you know if these reviews are helpful or not. Four people said that was helpful. I just <laughs> gave it a, I, Now it's five. Yeah, I just found it very helpful. So. Five people say they love this review. Yeah. Well, now it's now six. It's six. <laughs> but there are two. Oh, no. So yeah, there are hilarious. some that go like, oh, maybe I'm going to stay away from Stevie Tomatoes. <laughs> uh, Nick Tucker, two bucks, says Christian may be unlikable, but he's hot as fuck. Oh, Nick, <laughs> you sweet talker. You thanks. I think they're talking about producer Chris. No, Simon, no, no. three, four, three, five bucks. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Simon. Good to oh, see hello. you. Zach Hoffman became a new member. Thank you very much, Zach. Of course, if you become a member on this YouTube channel, if you want to join and sign up, you can watch the entire live show we did in Largo. That is up uh, members only, unedited. We had a blast down in Largo with the whole gang. A very fun show. We did in the Beavis Lee Ray, two bucks. Carl, thanks for the hookup with John's <laughs> book. Of course. Of course, Beavis Lee Ray. Carl, knock it off, dude. Jesus. I'm just mailing it out to everyone, yeah. whether they want it or not. Be selective. 
my aunt was like, I don't know what this is. It's this giant file dot MP3. I'm like, ah, I just share it with all your friends. Jay uh, by the way, the, re- the review, sorry, the review we shared is the best one. There are four more, just so everybody knows. Oh. It would be a shame if more people left more reviews on the uh, Steven right. Tomatoes page. Please, but, read these to us. Yeah, so this is, uh, some drunk kept repeating he was a TV person. It was very annoying. The service is great, and so is the location, but some of the patrons tank the experience. Okay. Food was great. Oh, hold the- on. This is yep. from Marco V. Yeah, from Marco V. Okay, Marco V. <laughs> Good yep. catch. Uh, food was great. There was a former Stern Show associate present whose constant belching, nose wiping, and outright stench would make me turn around if he were present next time we visit. And Scott B. from Stone Mill Farms, Woodbury, Minnesota. That's definitely a friend of Cardiff's, Woodbury, Minnesota. Uh, the staff was okay, yet there was this one allegedly drunk guy that said he was on a national radio show in the 80s and was very obnoxious. The management should have stepped in and possibly removed him as he was ruining everyone's evening. I've decided to increase the rating as the staff puts up with this type of customer. (laughs) Uh, I think this is our last one. Uh, Got to tell you, I love this place. We were renting an Airbnb in the area and stopped for an early dinner. Food and service were great, although amazingly enough, we ran into Stuttering John from the Howard Stern show there. That was a shock. You never recognize him, but he tells anyone that will listen his history and show business he even told us he carved FSJ and <laughs> FKB on one of the bathroom stalls. There's stall the doors. smoking gun right there. John did it. Ban him. Ban him. Ty, Ty W. from Chardon, Ohio, says that he saw it. Uh, he also, they have hermit crab races, too. They weren't going when we were there, but it sounded fun. Yeah, and I think that these, yeah, now it goes to the actual reviews of the okay. place, which are a lot of three and far, four stars. So that one that you read about him wiping his nose, I want to point this out. John is only doing that. He's snotting all over the place when he's in Canoga Park in that disgusting 500 square foot uh, studio apartment with his cats. He needs to clean that place. Yeah. It's not good for him. It's killing him. Yeah. There's there's definitely black mold in the walls. I yes. Think uh, yeah, it's 100%. On the walls. Visibly. <laughs> I, and, and when John gets to Florida, you can tell the difference. You can tell that he's yeah. breathing better and, and he's just, I don't know. What do I know? Uh, Jay Wolfenstein, five bucks says, also, I'm Vince the Lawyer. Aha, just kidding. You know that's BS. I'm actually funny once in a while. No, I can tell who's Vince the Lawyer and who's not. <laughs> it's pretty easy. The Black Hand, five bucks. Carl, for your magic eraser fun, FSJ, FKB. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We were on um, Uncle Rico today, like I said. And we discovered that on Thursday, John was putting his hand up like he always does because he can't help himself. And he's got this other weird thing, too, where he puts this hand up. The other one goes up with it. Like th- This is like literally like when you make fun of like the Mike Pachetti type of people where you're like, Ur-r-r-r-r. that's like what John is trying. That's what he started to do. But anyway, there was marker on his thumb, Sharpie marker visible on his thumb, which makes you think that maybe he was trying to get me in trouble. Maybe he framed me for this. Do you think he's the one who wrote FSJ, FKB? And, and, and I would have gotten away with it if not for you nosy kids. I think I think that might be what happened here. I could be wrong. Well, well, you know what we need to do is see where on the door it was written. If it's like three feet high, then he was probably <laughs> yeah. standing and writing it. <laughs> or sitting. <laughs> Michael P. Five bucks says, 57-year-old Mike Tyson can't get through a podcast without wheezing. I would love to see SJ train for a boxing match and see how we go, how he does. Go Bills. Yeah, Michael P. This is what's crazy is that John once again is saying he's going to kick everyone's ass. He, he Today he was just talking about how he would beat Shuley's ass in the, the boxing ring. John, you're in terrible shape. I mean, terrible, terrible shape. No one thinks you could last around against a shadow. You wouldn't <laughs> beat a prone shadow in a boxing ring. You would fall over from exhaustion. <laughs> Bob doing a COVID test, two bucks. Anyone going to see Shuley and Friends tonight? I, I think a lot of people are going out to see the uh, the shows tonight. Is it bsshowlive.com where you can get tickets, I believe? Uh, Flex316 gifted a membership. Thank you very much, Flex. Myrtle Mattis. Oh, Myrtle. Does anyone do a Myrtle voice in here? <laughs> get Dr. Steve. Well, that old stone <laughs> John or to lay off the... Corn squeezins or that living or business will give out like that 
old bridge that got hit by that boat. <laughs> Classic well, Myrtle. Myrtle. Uh, <laughs> I like it because it's topical. It's on point. Thank you, Myrtle. Silence, do get five bucks. John finally surprised me, convinced it was you telling the owners, knowing it's you because of the S, literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I go back and forth into thinking that John's playing a character because no one is that stupid in the history of the world. Because even the way that Vince presented that to him, John goes, I would love to know if this is how Carl, his handwriting looks like. And Vince goes, oh, no, that's definitely Carl's handwriting. I know because I've seen his S's and I was just teaching my kids the other day how to write an S. How old are these kids? He's teaching his kids how to write an S. Like John doesn't stop because he, he just wants to believe it. So he'd be just like, oh, I knew it. Instead, he'd be like, wait, which kid are you teaching how to write an S? Well, but Vince is always about. lying. He might not have kids at all. That's very possible. <laughs> yes. Rocco Orby, 2002, two bucks, says, hello, gents and Lady K. Hey. <laughs> Wait a second. Hey, oh, 1012, five bucks says army major and sells people who, who think differently. So I actually enjoy Vince the lawyer trolling him. All right. I can see what you're saying. Like Richard Ojeda. Now, ever since he went on blind Mike show, I like him more as a person. Cause he kind of leans I, into it. I agree. Yeah. Gets the joke a little bit, but he's also a guy. If you tell him, yeah, you know, this guy right here said something bad to his wife, to a face. He wants to curb stop them immediately. Like he's ready. He's ready to jump to violence faster than anyone I've ever seen. So he's kind of a douchebag in that regard. I got a, uh, I got a message on the discord from uh, Reverend Shitstein. Uh, I believe he's still a powerful pooper. He yes. requested, could he compile some of his uh, favorite clips of the army major being a douchebag because he hates him so much. And I'm like, yes, please Reverend yeah. Shitstein, please do that. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Who's stopping yeah. you? <laughs> I was like, oh, full steam ahead. But uh, he already sent us a nine minute video for uh, Tuesdays. Who are these broadcasters of politicians getting into fights? So I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> not for this week, but we'll get to the army major. Don't worry. Okay. Nine minutes might be a little long, but it, it is. Yeah. I got to figure out what I can do with it. <laughs> still appreciate it, though. All right, I'll, guys, I wanted to play this for you because if Vince is still here, I'm sure he is. We're going to give uh, Vince some credit for putting some bait out for John. And John takes it because he's a fucking moron. So what Vince is saying here is that Mike Morris is being distracted by the chat on the Uncle Rico show because people are talking about Mike Morris's ex-wife. And so Vince is laying out on his show that Mike is totally distracted, not paying attention to the show at all. And Vince says that he knows what Mike is typing when he's typing on his keyboard during the show. Now, for some reason, John just believes that that's definitely true. And he even, Vince even shows that it's not true. He makes it very clear and obvious, but only John wouldn't understand what he's doing here. So this is from John's show yesterday, I think. Vince, this is, this is the greatest breakdown that you've ever done. Because let's face it, you're calling out the ultimate in hypocrisy. And there's a new sheriff in town for hypocrisy. His name is Stuttering John. But Vince is nailing it. I wish Devin Alexandra, if you're watching, tell your daddy. I'm trying to get him on. All right. First off, John, the eyeshadow is not working for you. The uh, the eyeliner <laughs> is not working for you. <laughs> He's the sheriff from the uh, village people, apparently. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That shirt is not aging well either. No. Oof. My phone's in the other room, so if he's texting me, oh, I, oh, I blocked him, so I haven't unblocked him yet. This fucking guy is praising Vince the lawyer, telling his kids, hey, your dad did the right thing. I want to have him on the show. Tell your dad to, to come on the show. His kids are not watching you, John. His kids do not care about you. I promise you that. And he's like, well, oh, yeah, I blocked him on my phone, so I actually can't communicate with him. So this is look at this. Look at this hypocrite, sad sack. I cannot believe they call themselves comedian. But can you imagine being so insecure in yourself and really just so hypocrite? Forget about the, the insecurity. What about the hypocrisy? I showed you just one time of what Mike did. Mike made the concerted effort to broadcast John's mom with the whips, with the KY, with the magnums. And then so this is what I want to point out. So John's watching this sped up probably from uh, Dabbler or something or Hackverse. So 
what uh, our buddy Vince is saying is that he can see exactly what Mike is typing. And so he put the text up above Mike and it says, Phil, another super chat has my ex-wife's picture in it. Delete it now. Exclamation points. Now, here's the dead giveaway on this one. No one calls producer Joe Phil except for Vince and John. So Mike would not be writing in the private chat, Phil, take this down. So that's your giveaway right there. This is fake and a lie. But John believes this hook, line, and sinker, of course. And not only did that, he made overt statements. Exactly what he wants to do. And the dues payers participating in it too. And now someone types his ex-wife's name. Again, not his mom, but his ex-wife's name. And this is how distracted he got. There we go. Not paying attention at all. Dues payer, what's the point of having this guy on here if he's not going to pay attention? Yeah, it's perfect. Well, he's silent, Mike. Ah. Uh Look at this. He is not paying attention to the show at all. He's looking straight at the screen. What the fuck? Another super chat with Terry's name in it. Fuck it. Fuck it. So this is John thinking that he's getting over and that he's winning. This is smug John. Look at I'm winning. Mike Morris is a loser. John, you're falling for an obvious lie. This is how stupid you are. Even when you, especially when you think you're winning, you're losing. You're a loser. And you're such a fucking hypocrite. Hey, look, everybody who's been following me, you know that I've been the brunt of all their jokes. They attack my family nonstop. They attack my children. But look what happens when it comes back to them. <laughs> they can't take it. They cannot take it. And these people aren't even put saying anything bad about his ex-wife. They're just putting up a picture of her, and she's pretty. Me personally, I'd be I'd be like, yeah, I hit that. Aw, that's sweet of you, John. Yeah. I like it when his sweet side comes out. That's always <laughs> nice. It's so ridiculous just to consider that you can't you can't see what he's doing, and to seize on that like you have some damning evidence. Doesn't yeah. make it. Oh, I, I, you can't see his pants, but it, he peed his pants too. Yeah, oh, right. He, he, he might as well have said that. Did yeah. he? <laughs> yeah, of course he did. He's so scared of stuttering John that he wet his pants. <laughs> but no, something must be going on with him and his ex wife. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they don't get along anymore. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's the idea. Yeah, yeah, you know. Do you have any experience you, with that, John? Why don't you try and get Silent Mike's ex-wife? Typing. Now, I, I can't say exactly who told me, and it's not Bob either, that tell me exactly what was going on behind the scenes. They have a little private chat on the side, and Mike right here is chatting to the whole group saying, oh my God, they mentioned Terry Lynn, block it. And you know, Phil's not going to be able to give him good advice. Phil's not going to say, Mike, just lean into it. It's just your wife's name. They all know it's Terry Lynn. They all know what she looks like, apparently. And go with it. And pay attention to the show, Mike. Right for the show, say something funny. No, instead, those two get so easily distracted by the same and main reason most channels will fail. They get distracted by negative comments. Yeah, hold on. I, I think I can find it. Or as Bob Bowie would say, Nick Nolte. Fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's an idiot. Uh, yeah, he is an idiot. Look at, this. look at this. Mike is not even paying attention at all. At all. Page description here. So, Mike, only John falls for this type of show. Anyone who watches Vince the Loser show knows that the way that Vince is cutting up the video makes it look like. Mike is just distracted this entire episode. He just, he can't even pay attention. He's so busy looking at this thing. It's because of the way he edited this video to make it look like that. And so John just believes all of this because he's a fucking moron. Yeah. It's not that Mike is uh, Photoshopping John's mom's head on a pig <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. what he's actually doing. Yeah. He's probably spilling more ranch all over the place would be my guess. But no, John just uh, believes everything that idiot tells him. I also enjoy that John's like, oh, it's it's just some super chats. I I mean, there should be a, a you know, some kind of compilation of super chats that John puts up, and he's like, nope, I'm not going to read that one, and not that one, you know. And he goes through all of them. It's like, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 well, you know, I'm starting to think that John might be a hypocrite. I don't know. It's, a, it's just a, something that's occurred to me today. You know what? <laughs> you might be onto something because something new has just resurfaced. When I say new, I mean old. But just resurfaced, and everyone's talking about this. We all know the uh, poor little Jew boy song that John wrote for Howard Stern that he thought was going to be his theme song. And uh, Howard, of course, tore that apart like 
Joe, wh- why are you thought I thought he was a what? You can't say these things. We don't talk like that on this show. So John came back with a second song to redeem himself. And I didn't even know about this song, but the audio was out there. I'll, I'll play it for you. It's very offensive. So if you're offended by F slurs, watch out because John thinks <laughs> John thinks this is comedy. Everybody, this is stuttering John Melendez, everyone. He's hot as fire. Can you smell him burn? <laughs> what? He's hotter than fire. Can you smell him burn? Yeah, this is a heavy metal. Oh, man. <laughs> You're the worst, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another, another meaningless song. He's Spinal Tap without ever having been big. You know? <laughs> Does Robin think Spinal Tap was a real band? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, Spinal Tap without all the fame <laughs> and success. Wow. Okay. Well, that's funny. But all right, moving on. It's just swine. <laughs> Like you stupid rotten faggots, and that's just a pity. What? <laughs> what? If you, don't, if you don't like it, you did it again, didn't you? Are you doing this on purpose? Well, if you don't like them, you stupid rotten faggots. Well, that's just. Oh, a pity. you're so ridiculous! <laughs> How could you write these lyrics? In the wake of things that are dumb. <laughs> now you notice that they're all laughing. They're laughing at the fact that John has made the same mistakes they ridiculed him for the first time. They're not laughing at John's song. They're laughing at John. Now, of course, John will hear this and be like, everyone's laughing. This is great. I'm killing it on there. Yeah. And, you know, reminder, of course, this is John Melendez, ally of the LGBTQIA community. That's the same John Melendez. And uh, yeah, I mean, that tells you how bad this is, because this is the same era where, you know, Howard was on his pay-per-view special in blackface with Sherman Helmsley from the Jeffersons. And, Correct. and he's this like, is no, this is terrible. This is late eighties. They're like, you can't use that word. <laughs> What's, isn't that the name of your album? Or is it in the wake of things to come? Uh, Rocks in the head. Is Rocks, that the name of the band? <laughs> <laughs> I got a name for your band, the jerk offs. <laughs> come on, man. All right, so uh, let's go on with this oh, song. Man. I can't believe he put another <laughs> insulting song What's together. What's going on, man? What do you mean? This isn't insulting. This is not insulting to you. I said, if you don't like him, then you know. Well, how can I play that on the air if you're going to be calling people faggots? You know we don't do that. I mean, haven't you gotten hip to the show? We don't call people faggots. Uh, well, this is a long... This is right after I wrote the other song, man. This is, this is ancient. <laughs> It's not a real good song, though. You don't like the riff? It's not real catchy. (laughs) So even back then, he was using the... That was then. Yes! That was that excuse. (laughs) And that was 30 years ago. Yes, you you picked up on this. I mean, this is 40 years ago now. Even then, John was going, yeah, but that was, you know, six months ago that I was using those words. It's an older song. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy. Nothing changes with John. He's not a different person. His appearance is different. But he's not a different person in any way. Also, he goes, he goes, Howard, that's not offensive to you. Well, now that we've worried about him and Ralph's relationship, I guess the <laughs> officer is offensive to Howard Stern, it turns out. Also, you guys are musicians. Uh, John says, uh, don't you like the riff? Did I miss the riff? Because I, I didn't hear anything that I would classify as a riff. Just a, with you. Just a lot of noise. <laughs> no, you did not miss anything. Okay. It was not good in any single way. All right, let's uh, get back to the Super Chats. I got a lot more to get to today, obviously. So, uh, <laughs> Superman, two bucks, says, ETM claw hand equals JTM. Yeah, that that is a weird claw that he's got going on now. <laughs> J- John the Midget, is that what you're saying? That's funny. <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny new name for him. Brock Oli, the uh, Irish cousin of Broccoli, Two bucks. My new phallus smells like peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny's tits. I believe this is uh, Dr. Steve. Vinny's tits, five bucks, says, are less meaty and pendulous since he lost all the luscious weight. <laughs> pendulous. Yeah, Vinny's, Vinny has uh, definitely slimmed down. That's for sure. A night with night, two bucks. Oh, that's a photo. That's very embarrassing. What do you think caused SJ to become so childlike? I don't think he ever grew up. Yeah, there's um, there's photos that are out there. This is one of them that's on the screen right now. I'll take it off. That uh, are very embarrassing of, of John's um, trans son. And uh, I guess Patrick Melton has put it out there that he's going to put them in the background of his show on Monday. 
unless John apologizes to him. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. F1 fan five bucks. Love the show and all you guys. Go Cowboys. Fuck Philly. Charles Leclerc is overrated F1 F reference. <laughs> Any other F1 fans here? Anyone want to comment on that? Yeah. No, I think they know the room. Obviously, a lot of F1 uh, overlap yeah. in the Dabble verse. Yeah, sure. sure. My boy Purple coming in. Remember for five months. So nice to see you, Carl, Chris, and Andy last week in Largo. I just realized it's a two and a half hour drive to Stevie's where I live, and I do own John a beer. I owe John a beer. Yes, you should definitely hang out with John at Stevie Tomatoes, Purple. Get down there. Good to see you too, buddy. Thanks for coming to the live show. Yeah. Brock Lee, two bucks. Sorry, I'm like Vince, but not Vince. <laughs> uh, Vince the Downsy Midget, two bucks. VTL jerks to pics of himself staring into a mirror. <laughs> that, that I believe. That I believe. That makes a lot of sense to me. Hey, yo, 1012, five bucks says, his setup is so ridiculous at his Florida house that it is amazing even for John. Just in a chair staring out his curtainless front window. So this is something that came out. So John's been doing this thing now where Vince or whoever is sending over all these delivery people to his house. And he just, he'll be talking to his guest or something. And they just seem to do this. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just staring out the window. So the other day, someone got him to actually turn his camera around and show the uh, delivery person out in his yard. And you could see his... His place is just empty. It's just not, he's just sitting in a chair with a green screen and then it's just a big empty place. And then like a window in front of like right in front of him. So should we assume that he stares out that window from that chair, the other 22 hours a day, and we just happen to visit with him while he's streaming, staring out the window. Yeah. Yes. Well, there's also Stevie tomatoes time. In there too. Yeah, that's yeah. a great point, man. Trip to home Depot and off the Stevie <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Matthew Riley five, five bucks is Carl. I too am an attorney. For the good of our profession, can you reach out to Vince the Lawyer and offer your services to update his website? It's embarrassing. His <laughs> website is brutal. It is so bad. None of the links work. It's not a flattering. I know he thinks he's hot. It's not a flattering photo of him. I can't imagine he's still a practicing attorney. I can't imagine he is. Not with that website. Because anyone would look up. If you ever get an attorney, if you ever work with a company in a B2B setting, you look at their website. You just check it out. Make sure it's on the up and up. That's why that MSCS engineering website, I was like, there's no way Tommy is yeah. getting engineering jobs. You don't need a website to hand business cards to people coming into a hospital emergency room on a gurney. You just throw business <laughs> cards on injured people and, and wait for the phone call. I'm sure that's his marketing campaign. Yank, yank. Wow. Well, Sue Andy Q public for that one. All right. I'm not the one to say any of this. Fuck yank, you. yank. In Texan, remember four months. VTL and SJ are retarded. Mike works on bits and photoshops while the show is going. Yeah, I know. No shit. Th this is the thing. We all know that Mike is contributing to the show. He's not in there telling Phil to take down super chats and shit. But John falls for that because he's a fucking moron and he thinks he's anytime. This is the thing too. John was so mad at Vince. He was dead to him because Vince was insulting Richard Ojeda's um, wife. And then more recently, his estranged daughter and his other daughter. And it's always Vince the lawyer in there make, doing these chats and offending Richard Ojeda. And John goes, that better not have been you. And he goes, no, it wasn't. He goes, okay, good. <laughs> He's so fucking stupid. But as soon as Vince the lawyer starts making fun of Shuli or Mike Morris or Bob, then he's just like, all right, no, you're a good, you're one of the good ones. Come on over. We're friends again. Uh, Tar Marnold. Carl, <laughs> you said you didn't trust VTL way before anyone else saw the light. What was it about the crazy midget that tipped you off? Yeah, I think I was on to him sooner than uh, than most people. I don't remember what it was. By the way, that question also sounds like one that Vince the lawyer would ask because he wants to know, like, what did I do wrong that you yes. hated me so early? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Good point. <laughs> Count Connor, two bucks. Poor little Jew boy is on Beyonce's new album. I hope she credited really, John. That's the same Count Connor who did uh, all of my Photoshop work for the day. So thank you for all. Well, thank you, Count $2. Connor. Oh, thank you. And... Another two bucks. This song is sub Jesus twins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. James Quinn, two bucks. Show me your pecs, Carl. How long I got to ask? Well, there's a private discord for that kind of talk. James Quinn. Ooh. See me in there. 
weird medicine with Dr. Steve. Ha ha, quit doxing me, Carl. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, I mean, Vin, Vinny's, w- which one was it? Vinny's fat. I forget what it's called. Vinny's Vinny's Vinny sits. Sits. Yeah, yeah. Vinny's sits could have been anyone. I, I don't know who that was. <laughs> it was great hanging out with Dr. Steve last weekend. Absolutely. We got, yeah, we got to spend a lot of time with him, which, you know, I remember DabbleCon, I couldn't get him over to the house. And uh, a couple of the other shows that we've done, he's always like, I got an early flight. I'm out. You know, he just rushes away from us, but we actually get to hang out. That's because he was on call, right? So he had to work the whole time. So he's like, yeah, 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 I'm in no rush. (laughs) That was was the funniest thing. We get to the venue Friday night and um, we get there. We're we're setting up and Dr. Steve's like, hey, anything I can do to help? Uh, no, I think we're good. We're just going to do this and this and this. And then I hear him on the phone. He's just like, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I can't be there. I'm actually in Florida right now. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, are you taking work calls? He goes, yeah, I'm on call. Like, <laughs> You're on call on Friday night of our show? What are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to get someone to cover for me. What are you doing, Dr. Steve? <laughs> well, I'm talking about uh, fecal flora. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure women- other people... I'm sure other people he works with could just tell whoever calls in, like, yeah, just drain the fluid. Yeah. <laughs> this one's not going to make it. <laughs> Violence <laughs> against women in Zen. Congrats, Carl. SJ dethroned you for having worse hair. <clears throat> yes, I did it. I knew it could happen. Jay Wolf has seen five bucks. He's funding this whole operation right now. I used to be able to read sheet music. I listened to John's song, and now I can't even play Chopsticks <laughs> of USJ. <laughs> That's funny. CMOS 4044, two euros. Boo this show. John is boring. Do another music show. You got it. We just recorded. Andy and I just recorded a new four-song EP. Let's play those songs right now, back to back to back. Yeah. And Bob has spoken. <laughs> Sierra says of the liver of the river, two bucks. Check out Cape Harbor slash Tarpon Pit if you haven't. Okay. All right. <laughs> Superman, two bucks, says, great content, fellas. Keep up the hard work. See you in Vegas. Yep. Hackamania.com. Bwee. <laughs> yeah, bwee. <laughs> Stop it. How long before Cardiff has that drop of Carl saying, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. Uh, Right now, right about now. Yeah, he already has it. Hackamania.com. Get your tickets. We will be there May 31st through June 2nd. Looking forward to that show very much. Violence Against Women in Zen, five bucks. And Bessie Law Group, what we lack in height, we make up for in harassment and lies. Remember when uh, Vince was saying he was going to have to sue me if John sued him? Because yeah. then it would mean that he did something with his client and then it looked bad on him. Like the only person who makes him look bad is him. Yeah. I can't imagine that he'd be able to prove anything. A1, 10, 12, two bucks. As I assume any round dollar super chat is Vince now. <laughs> now the, the round dollars, depending on whether you're on a uh, desktop or a laptop versus a iPhone, I think. The iPhone turns everything into a dot .99 which makes no sense to me because the whole point, I'm, listen, I have a marketing background. I don't want a big time everyone. The whole point. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I know. I know. A dollar 99 is the same as $2, but it looks like a dollar and change. So you fool people into thinking it's less money than it actually is. So the fact that they would make super chats, make it look like it's less money is stupid. Yeah. It's the opposite effect of what you're trying to do. DJ Davies, 10 bucks says Vince, the lawyer is a sociopath. If the devil verse shut down tomorrow, he would go on a something spree or spontaneously <laughs> combust. So hopefully the latter. Hopefully the latter on that one. Uh, real quick, we were talking about CV tomatoes. I wanted to show you guys this uh, this Photoshop. <laughs> so who put this together for us? I have it in my notes somewhere. Oh, the Chuckster. The Chuckster put this together, and it's a, a nice Photoshop of John catching me with the manager, who he loves, at Stevie Tomatoes, as I'm using my Sharpie to write FSJ, FKB on the door. What a huge I, Sharpie I, I, you I, I, used, Carl. Where did you find one that big? Only the, only the biggest and thickest Sharpies for me, my friend. I have seen the Photoshops. <laughs> 
Oh, this is fun, too. This happened on today's show. I took a screen grab of it. So John was trying to show Dabbler's Anonymous today. He was trying to show a Reddit thing that he was looking at. But he must have grabbed the wrong tab because instead he pulled up his um, studio. studio. Yeah, his, his yeah. YouTube studio. Uh, and look at like he's getting ready to put a, a video up. And it just says in the description, Carl is such a lying, passive, aggressive scumbag. That's the, that's how, he's, how far he's gotten. He's like, well, I got to make sure I write this down or I might forget. Well, look at the, the field above that, though. He's clearly been working on this episode since January 23rd, 2024. You're right. So yes. that's, he's two months in and trying to figure out what else he's going to write. In that next yes. uh, I, I do like the, uh, thumb, the thumbnail he's chosen. That was great. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> He doesn't look like a Mike Pachetti at all. That's great, John. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Now that's Italian. <laughs> all right. So on today's show. Now, I don't like to bring family into things. John likes to bring my family into things quite a bit. I don't like to. But John's the one who brings it up. So then we talk about it because he brings it up on his show. So John says, I got some great family news yesterday. We're all very excited. I think he said there he was tearing up. He was so excited about this family news. And he said, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you. I'm like, well, why, why'd you bring it up then, John? Because there's a rumor going around. I don't know if this is true or not. That night might be preggers. Have you guys heard this rumor? <laughs> no. So night is married today. Night and day. Shut and up. yeah, for real. It never gets old. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> I love that Andy didn't know that till right now. No, shut up, Carl. Yeah. Not, like not, a... only, not only did oh, they get you. married, not only did they get married, but guess who wasn't at the wedding? Noon. <laughs> <laughs> Stuttering uh, John. Gar Gar Gary Delabate, the real dad, who also wasn't there. Well, that's really your thinking of. But oh, yes. sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, John was not at the wedding, but he claims that, you know, they just did like a town hall thing. I'm, I'm guessing Susanna was there, but whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't care. It doesn't make a difference. But, By the way, if uh, I yeah. got married at a town hall, do you know who I would make sure was there? My dad. Yeah, I would <laughs> think so. But what do I know? <laughs> Whoops. Pe people, people, well, people change their gender. It, you know, everyone does their own thing. It's fine. It's nothing uh, fosters respect from the rest of the world like, uh, gimmicky, jokey nicknames for each other. It's just like, yeah, this uh, this seems like something I'm going to take seriously. My wife, <laughs> my wife Day, and my husband Night. That doesn't sound like a dumb bit. Well, I wonder who Turbo's going to marry yeah. <laughs> now that we have uh, these connections <laughs> going on. Um, they're talking about my fake kids. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, so th there's a rumor swirling around that. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it's true or not. And in fact, I would never have brought it up. But then John, I was watching John's show today, and he goes, yeah, you know, some amazing news in my family. I'm so excited about it. I'm like, why did you even say that? Because now everyone's just going to speculate, like I am right now, and try yeah. to figure out what the <laughs> fuck is going on. It's so stupid. Until you mentioned that this was a rumor, I thought I understood the way that John's kids had all, you know, evolved and transitioned. I didn't think Knight was one that could actually get pregnant, but uh, I guess I guess it is possible. So <laughs> I, I got to update my bingo card, Carl. Yes. I know, right? You didn't expect that one, did you? <laughs> All right. The other thing I want to talk about on today's show is the, the big news going on with Misery Loves Company. Now, there's a lot of fallout happening around Kevin Brennan. Surprise, surprise. Obviously, um, you have a lot of people banned from the show now. Besides just like Pat Dixon, I think Stevie Lou's off the show. I don't know what's going on with Stevie Lou. He took down his entire YouTube channel. He's off Twitter. Not Stevie oh, Lou. I know, right? Oh, no. What are we going to do without Stevie <laughs> Lou? That was a fun conversation. So we were in the studio this past week, and uh, Doug from the Jingles Department is our engineer there. And so uh, Doug and I were talking. He goes, you know, Carl, there's a there's this one guy I cannot figure out. He's not interesting. He's not entertaining. He's never said something funny. I don't even understand why he's – Stevie Lou, what, what's his deal? I, no, I know. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it at all. And I we even brought up the point – where Stevie Lou had this whole angle with getting in on John's good side and being a regular on his show. And I thought he was going to do something with it. He did nothing with it. It's like, yeah, he had an opportunity and he did nothing. And I don't get what his deal is. At it's all. the Trump so call funny. all over again. Yeah. Not since right. DG has uh, somebody done so little with nothing. Right. Yeah. It's a DG-esque. 
where you're just like, all right, you're on the show regularly. Now, what are you going to do with that? It's just like, I ah, just go away eventually. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Shut it down. It's fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good job. So apparently the big news is that Adam Hineker has put in his two week notice with misery loves company. Now, Adam thin Skinnaker Hineker <laughs> is the producer of the show. And the thing about Adam's role on MLC is that Kevin is a boomer. Kevin can't figure out anything. Oh God, Kevin this week calling out David tells special on Netflix. Well, well, did you see it yet? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the, the, the funniest set that Kevin Brennan's ever done versus that set from David tell. Yeah. I mean, I haven't think? seen any Brennan comedy, so I don't know, but, uh, you didn't my, think that was a good special? I thought a half hour of a 40 minute special was good. Half an okay. hour was good. So 75% of it was good. Yeah. You, okay. The recorder the bit end sucked. And was not good. The end the, was record, not good. the recorder bit sucked. Whatever. <laughs> the guy packs more punchlines into comedy than any other comedian I've ever seen in my That's life. Fine. But the, then he's goes to the end. He's like, Oh, I got to do this for uh, two and a half minutes or else I don't get paid. That, that oh was, yeah. Well, I, I didn't watch that. Oh, well, it's pathetic. It was bad. Uh, Andy, Andy, after we're done, go watch go watch Brendan's pilot and see if you enjoyed that more. Oh, than, I never. I uh, tried to watch that before. Okay. I couldn't get through it. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, you act like you're paying for Netflix by the minute or something. Like you pay for it monthly. You can turn it off when it gets boring. Turn it off. It's fine. It shouldn't be included. It's embarrassing that it's, it's part included. of the joke. It's the joke, you dummy. Not funny. It wasn't funny. Anyway, Kevin Brennan has the balls to call out. This is what's great about Kevin Brennan right now is that he never leaves his house. He's broadcasting, he's streaming from his uh, apartment multiple times a day and then calls out people who are actually doing things, doing live shows, getting Netflix specials. And it, it, it's like, that's a flex. Like I'm obviously winning because here I am avoiding my family in my bedroom and streaming for super chats. Like, okay, well, I don't know if that's the flex that you think it is, but anyway, Adam Hineker is leaving the show and what Kevin Brennan is going to do without Adam. I have no idea because Adam is the glue. Like when Kevin tries to do stuff on his own, it's embarrassingly bad from a technology standpoint. The best part is though, is that John on his show comes out and he says he will not accept Adam Hineker's job. He will not take on that role of Adam's job, a job that he a was not offered. And B, he, he could not possibly do. do. He couldn't possibly do it. And he has the balls to go on his show. He's just like, I'm not taking Adam's job. I don't care what anyone says. You can't convince me to take Adam's job. It's like the Jackie chair all over again. No yes. Yeah, it. right. Don't worry about it. How Howard told me he regretted not giving me the Jackie chair. He's trying to be nice, John. Some, some people try to be nice yeah. from time to time. <laughs> And then the other thing that John has going this week is the boat. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dust boot. John's going to buy a boat. And it's embarrassing because I think this is the week that he was supposed to be hanging out with his urgent care physician friend who owns an airport at his house. And remember, like they were going to fly Kate Meany and Kate Meany's hot 40 year old friend. And then the two of them were going to go out to the Keys and they were going to party. And John was trying to make us jealous of that. He's like, do you have a friend who flies to the Keys, Carla? You know, whatever. And this is the thing about John that I find fascinating. I don't know anyone else like this. He brags about things that haven't happened yet and will never happen. So again, in John's like giant flex of like, and you know what? I'm going to have a boat. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw. I'm going to steer it out to the Gulf of Mexico and I'm going to pass out. And then I'm going to wake up in the morning at the golf and I'm just going to cruise around in my boat. It's like, none of this is going to, John, you say this shit all the time. No one takes it seriously. You're not going to get a boat. No one thinks you're going to have a boat, John. Well, then I'll get a plate. <laughs> right. I, I love insane. that his, his dream for the boat is to, you know, just pass out drunk in the Gulf of Mexico. It's not, yeah. like, I want to take my boat to a place and go to that place and then get yeah. back in my boat and go to another place. Right. Or, or like go fishing or like sure. other things you would do with a boat. His whole idea is like, I'm going to pass out and then wake up and it'll be the morning time. Yeah. <laughs> cool. 
<laughs> Sounds like a good plan for you, John. Good luck with that. Uh, Clyde coming in. Oh, we saw that one. Jay Wolfenstein, five bucks. Damn it. I thought I was super chatting $1.99 and $4.99. I'm going to need a refund on those pennies <laughs> because I'm a millionaire. No problem. Here's here's the deal, Jay Wolfenstein. When I get the check from YouTube next month on the 21st, I'll pay you back the money minus the 30% that YouTube takes out. So we'll figure it out. Michael C. Two bucks. Sorry, lady night. Biology wins again. Whoops. <laughs> Tar Arnold, two bucks, says, tell that uh, something in blue that I am not Vince. FNYC. Now I'm 100% sure that that's Vince. One, it's an even dollar amount. And uh, just trying to say, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not Vince. <laughs> Count Connor, two bucks, says, I smell a junior remake. <laughs> or is that just John's BO? <laughs> yeah. Jay Wolf is five bucks. I can't take seriously anyone named after a Dr. Seuss character, Stevie Lou who? <laughs> good point zach off of two bucks says hey boys can we talk about john's dead lawn grass is his lawn grass dead because i thought that he was in trouble for running the sprinklers while it was raining what's the thing that i heard i don't know i could be wrong about that rick you 32 25 bucks says i desperately need john to get a rust bucket of a boat and have it sink immediately after setting sail <laughs> I don't desperately need that, but I'd like that. I, I feel like fun. he already owned one like that, according to Dabo's Anonymous. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was an old video with Howard Stern going over his rust bucket. Yeah, what, what's up with that? I, I didn't look into it at all. So he used to own uh, a, a boat? Yeah, that was news to me today. And I'm sorry, wait, this isn't a clip show. It's not a clip show. Not a clip but, show. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess he sold the rust bucket at this point. Okay. Or did he, he think that he, you know, put it at a dock and it just actually floated away? And he's like, eh, that's why pencils have erases. <laughs> like his Harley. <laughs> yeah, right. Bully 203, I heard Carl was saying Vince the lawyer has a spectrum disorder. Okay, so now Vince is adding three extra cents to throw us off the trail. Okay. Is that what well, it then. is? Yeah. Bully yeah. actually messaged that on, I think, every show. Oh, okay. John would call that <laughs> OCD. I just think that uh, some people have a bit and they run with it. Would be uh, my guess on it, but what do I know? So another thing I want to talk about that I saw this week is John was talking about uh, gun owners. And John said that, um, you know, if you're a gun owner and you have children, what happens is you might put them in a safe. You might think that they're locked up. The children can't get it. They'll figure out a way. He even said, my son was a computer hacker. So these kids, they're smart. They'll get into it. They'll figure it out. And he was citing the fact that if you own guns as a parent, then it's likely that your children will shoot themselves or each other with those guns. And I don't think that that is based in statistics. I don't think John knows what the fuck he's talking about. He had Quadfather on after he was talking about that. Nice. Yeah. And Quadfather's so just like, yeah, we, you know, we actually all own guns out here in the country, and yeah. we teach our children how to use guns and how to respect them. Yeah. So you don't really understand what you're talking about? <laughs> no, no, John's on to something. You know, I grew up in a really rural area in New York State, and, you know, the first day of hunting season, a lot of kids would uh, take off with their dad and go hunting. Every single one of them got shot. Yeah. They all died when they went <laughs> hunting. So John's right. Did anyone else hear this segment of the show? It was so weird because yeah. you're going on and on about it. And I like the part where Vince was like, well, what if uh, three black guys break into your house and, don't, don't, and they have guns? Don't you think that it might be a good idea to have a gun? Yeah. And John's like, whoa, whoa, why do they have to be black? <laughs> right? That's one of the, just, yeah. And he's like, all right, well, forget no. it. Forget the so race. Because what if, what if they, they would be black <laughs> because of the neighborhood you live in, John. That's yeah, why. yeah. Well, isn't I mean, that funny? Like, the guy yeah. who doesn't understand how statistics work. <laughs> because he's sitting there going, yeah, if you have guns and your children will shoot themselves. Yeah. And then he, and then Vince goes, well, what if like black guys break into your house? He's like, what if we black? Like, well, statistically, yeah. I'm just saying statistically is all. Yeah. I mean, it could be any, could be a, a Japanese guy. I don't know. But statistically <laughs> it might be. Yeah. So then Vince is like, do you, so would you want to have a gun then? He's just, I can't remember what he, what he was. His oh, argument no, was John, John, John. John's argument was, I'll, I like, I'll take my chances. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, you can't beat this. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's three black guys with a gun. Yeah. And you can probably you, beat it. You can actually pistol whip that. Yeah, you could beat it to death. Yeah, John's uh, John's whole thing was. I guess Vince didn't pose the question correctly because Vince said, if three guys break into your house who have guns, wouldn't you want a gun? John goes, well, if there's three guys with guns, I'll probably die anyway. <laughs> okay, but... Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing where John, someone calls John out and he rips on their grammar. You're, you're right. like, okay, yeah. but I mean, you're, you're, you understand the essence of this argument, though, right, John? Yeah. Like, you're, you're just avoiding the actual conversation. Why is he, he suddenly an anti-gun? Is he running for senator again? <laughs> Oh, I hope so. <laughs> he should I, really just, join the uh, the Flat Earth Society, the way that he does, argues. Everything does John like, just think that if uh, three guys showed up in his house with guns, he'd be like, all right, you want to step outside? Come on, let's step outside, because he can take yeah. care of them as long as they go outside. And then I would yes. lock the door behind him after they went outside. <laughs> you, you can't, can't beat this! You can't beat this! <laughs> Got him again! <laughs> all right, let's talk about tough guy John, because uh, we have... Hackamania coming up. Chris, all of us are going to be there. Yeah. For Hackamania. Yes. All right. This is very exciting. Hackamania.com is where you want to go for tickets. And I was watching Melton last night. Melton was giving it to KB. It was fan fucking tastic. I sent him a note. Really good episode. Check that out if you haven't already. But uh, nobody likes onions. So we're all going to be in Vegas. It's going to be nobody likes onions, the creep off. Who are these podcasts? Ray DeVito's going to be there. The Rock Bottom Podcast. Pat Dixon's going to be there. It's a whole lineup. It's going to be fantastic. Doing live stand-up, a Kill Tony style, open mic, all these live podcasts, some fun gambling and excursions on Sunday. So definitely worth checking out, and I think it's definitely going to sell out. Uh, tickets are already moving very quickly, and it's a few months away still. But uh, John claims that he's going to come to Vegas, and uh, I hope he does. Because that would be fun and funny. There'd definitely be some stories from that. But <laughs> is anyone intimidated by John? Does anyone think that we're going to be afraid of him? Because he likes to think that in Atlantic City, him telling people to go outside is the same as him winning a fight. <laughs> so does he think he's going to come to Hackamania with all of us there? And what does he think he's going to accomplish with that? I, I want him to be there. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I mean, He's I'll be at the I'll be at the nickel sluts if you want to throw it out. <laughs> I mean he he's he's a, I didn't uh, see the nickel slots, John. The penny slots. <laughs> you got he's me. A but they were outside. <laughs> he he would clearly get beat up by Tuki. I'm not talking about Rocco. I'm talking about the puppet without yes. anybody's hand in it. Tuki would kick his ass. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> so no one's afraid of John showing up in uh, Vegas. Oh no, no. I, welcome I mean, it. It, it, if he was smart, wherever, you know, a table close to the venue, he would just, you know, sign pictures and charge like 20 bucks for, you know, autographs or something. You know, I mean, he doesn't have the business sense to do that, but that's what he should do. That's interesting. You're right. If he could do $10 selfies. Just take a photo with John. I think people would line up for that. I'll throw uh, in ten, a ten dollars or three cores, whichever you prefer. <laughs> yeah. How about how about a cores and a half, John? I already drank <laughs> half of mine. <laughs> Okay. Oh, he had, he had a martini. <laughs> he had a martini in Atlantic City. John, I'll buy you a martini if you show up, man. <laughs> I was yeah, just well, watching him uh, on, with Ray DeVito on his show. Mm -hmm. He had Ray on, and he was speculating about ticket sales not doing so well. <laughs> and Ray's just like, this. we're not worried about it. It's still a couple of months away, and people will people will show up for it, you know, but because John, whatever, you know that he doesn't have any kind of real information about what Correct. the ticket sales are. It's right. all coming third hand, probably from Vince. And that's Correct. probably, that's probably Ray DeVito's one gig that he's not worried about ticket sales. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, the, the one show that's been promoted by everyone is Hackamania. Yeah. Because this has caused the big fallout with Ray DeVito and MLC and Pat Dixon and MLC. And, of course, this has led to Patrick Melton and Kevin Brennan going at it pretty heavy. So all of these shows, all they're talking about is Hackamania. <laughs> this is like the biggest event that's coming up this year. So the fact that you'd be like, and ticket sales aren't even good for it. It's like, yeah, then why is Kevin Brennan talking about it and <laughs> Pat Dixon? And Matt, like, why is everyone talking about this nonstop if ticket sales aren't going well? I would imagine some people are going to show up for it. Oh, speaking of which. 
I don't know what happened with this because I don't watch MLC that much, but when we were hanging out after the show in Largo, T.O. Hanks was there, or T.O. Hank. Yeah. And uh, I took a photo with him. He's like, oh, I'm seven, sending this to Kevin Brennan. So I don't know. That's one of his super chairs, one of his buddies. Hmm. So I don't know what uh, ended up happening with that, but it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. This, this is what I was talking about earlier. Some oh, people yeah. are speculating <laughs> that John is the one who wrote FSJ FKB. And here's the proof right here, the Sharpie marking on his <laughs> finger. Oh, so Padwell Oswalt did it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great show. It was a really good show. <laughs> right. That's funny. Yeah, I saw I saw Ray DeVito on with uh with Stuttering John today. And uh that's a whole weird thing too, because John has talked trash about everyone. He trashes everyone all the time. He's called out Ray DeVito so many fucking times, called him a nobody, says he's not funny, whatever. And now that Kevin Brennan doesn't want to talk to Ray anymore, Ray's just popping on with John or whoever will have him. That's why this, okay. I wasn't going to go down this road today, but might as well. This is so fucking fake. People, when, when I did the shows with John this past summer, I remember seeing... Threads in Dabblers Anonymous, where it's like, oh, this is so lame. Carl and John are going to do a show together now after they've been ragging on each other. This is all just fake. It's all wrestling. I got an opportunity to tell John he's a loser to his face and to bring up all these things he's lied about and all this bullshit that he's done. And so I took that opportunity and I did that. If I ever get back on Kevin Brennan's show again, which I'm not asking for, but if he ever has me on again... I have a lot of shit to call him out for. He's a, a lying loser. And that's what I would, I would take the advantage of that opportunity. These idiots talk all this shit for months and then they get to go on each other's shows together. Just like, ah, yeah, we're cool, right? Yeah. Hey, what's up? <laughs> it's, it's fake. This whole fucking thing with Kevin Brennan, Ray DeVito, all this shit is fake. It's lame. Anyone else picking up on this? Am I the only one? <laughs> Well, no, well, first I was watching of all, I, I, I was triggered when you said that your uh, interviews with John were only last summer. I'm like, what? No, that feels like three, four years ago. There's no I way know. that was only right. this past summer. <laughs> Sorry, Chris, I spoke over you. No, it's fine. I, I was watching some of uh, the John and Ray show, thinking the same thing, but I'm thinking it's just as fake as their friendship is fake. It's all fake. <laughs> yeah. you know? It is. So there's no camaraderie, and they're talking about nothing. Although it's interesting to note that when Ray goes out of town, he goes to a... Uh, Planet Fitness to shower. So <laughs> it's awesome to know. I know. Follow, so follow him for more tips. <laughs> you know, the, the thing about being a podcaster or a broadcaster, either you're knowledgeable about a lot of things. So one way to get away with this is to be a uh, Ben Shapiro or, you know, one of these guys, uh, Jimmy Dore, one of these guys who follows a lot of news and information and has takes on things and analysis and goes through this stuff. And then another thing you can do is be an interesting person and have an interesting life and tell stories like Artie Lang was and the Howard Stern show. Holy shit. This guy would go on for an hour about playing a pig on mad TV. And you're like, this is captivating. It's amazing. Now what's happening is in the world of podcasting, you have boring assholes who do nothing but <laughs> podcast all day, every day and have nothing to fucking talk about. Aren't interested in anything. Aren't interesting people. And then they sit there and just like, yeah, you know, when I'm when I go to Toledo, I, I bring my comforter with me and I shower at Planet Fit. It's like these are not anecdotes. Do Who go gives on. A shit? Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> people are fucking boring. Do something with your lives. Yeah. I know we just got done calling each other talentless hacks, but we have nothing else. <laughs> so I guess we're best friends now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's how pathetic this is. Is that and I'll give credit to Tukey. I think he was the first one to bring it up. All these people have no friends in their lives, no real <laughs> friends. They're all literally legit looking for friendship in the Dabbleverse. No. Well, I, actually, I think... when we first reviewed uh, Opie Radio, you're like, who is this for? Oh, lonely people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's literally a, a hang. Hey, we're at the bar. Hey, right. what's up? Oh, Carl, see Vic's here. You're like, this is not a show. This is the obnoxious person next to you at the bar. And you're like, let's go sit at the table. <laughs> I got to get away from this asshole. 
But yeah, lonely people want to act like. Where you going? Where you going? I think the dabble verse is in like it's like uh, season twenty of the Simpsons phase where it's like John went and bought bags of salt. John wants a boat. Ray DeVito likes to shower at Planet Fitness and scene. Right, <laughs> yeah, we've all the good plot ideas came out the first fifteen seasons. <laughs> um jay wolfenstein two bucks says carl you should be scared he's five seven and a half <laughs> right. watch out for that half he's not though he is much shorter than that he is shrinking i mean his neck's gone so that's probably part of it <laughs> but he does seem like he's shrinking from what i've seen dang lizard five euro says praise centering john messiah savior of Artie lang and our holy dabbler he sees all that is all that was and all that will ever be we are all equals. Yeah. Dang lizard, I want to set up your religion, but uh, you're teasing me with it too much. I need to know more. I need a pamphlet in the mail or something. I need more information. Don't go Chris with 10 bucks. Burp, 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 burp. <laughs> Just wanted to say happy Friday, everyone. Well, happy, is today Good Friday? It is. Happy Good Friday to everyone. Yeah, good Friday, or, Chris. Or if, or if you're Shuli, you say it was the best Friday. Yeah, right. Is it Good Friday the day that the Jesus died, right? Sure is. Yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know religion very well. I don't know why that I don't know how that works out. My boy Troy Smith coming with two bucks. You demand, Lady K. Keep it a hundred. FSJ FKB and F V T L F M J. Same person. You're right, Troy. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. When I was on Uncle Rico today, someone said, You guys gotta come to Detroit. And they're like, Oh, I don't know. No, you really should go to Detroit. There's tons of dabblers in Detroit. That's a great place to do live shows. I think that uh, Shuli and the gang would do very well there. Dang Lizard 5 euros says, Stop lying, Lady K. You had SJ on to be his friend and play the guitar with him <laughs> just to sing his praises, and we all know it. How can you betray your buddy? I know that's the thing, too. And it immediately got spun that I was playing guitars with John, and we were just yucking it up. Like, how do you not watch the first two hours of that? And just watch that. Oh, whatever. What that was the turn. <laughs> the turn. Yes, the turn. From, uh, from enemies to friends. Yep. Brent Monkhouse, five Australian dollars. John has been in Baltimore practicing his boating skills. <laughs> Ayo! Wow, we, the U.S. really does make some international news sometimes. <laughs> A man so, died, guys. <laughs> Only one person died in that? No, a whole Six, bunch of people died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like okay. Everyone who was working on that bridge and not in a car. Yes, I believe they all died. Yeah. Also, some other people died. <laughs> Too soon. No, Very sick. good. Um, anything else you guys picked up on this week? Because uh, like I, I was, we came back from Florida, and then Andy and I were in the uh, studio two days this week recording our new EP. So I was not paying as close attention as I normally am. Anything that I missed, Christian, what do you got? Uh, it's it's fairly minor, uh, but uh, I've had it on the screen the whole time, probably to remind myself. You know, he has he's done this before, but he talks about how he's known at rooms to go. You know, the place where he buys his shitty furniture. You know, it's like it's like it's, it's that's basically his uh, his Stevie Tomatoes. It's like, oh, John's here. Oh, let's let's help him get some. Uh, you know, really discount furniture dude that's an insane thing where he's bragging about buying an entertainment center from rooms to go or a, or a nightstand yeah and he was complaining about how much a nightstand costs and <laughs> wow he's great it's crazy and it makes me think again that he's playing a character he can't really be this dumb am i or this broke yeah why well, I, I believe that he's that broke he was saying the other day that he makes more money than me. Someone's like, you know, Carl makes more money than you. And he goes, no, he, he only makes money off of Patreon. Okay, John, let's say that that's the case. Um, you bragged about making $5,000 one month on YouTube <laughs> and you ran around saying, I'll prove it. I made $5,000 last month <laughs> and you haven't made that claim since that was in December, which is a, the, your best month. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I know your pension isn't paying you that much money. So I'm not sure where he's getting this from. He just he just makes shit up. Yeah. I get an allowance. <laughs> well, there he is speculation. A lap about a hundred dollars too. He was so excited to get that. There, there is speculation that he's got his mom paying for all his uh, furniture for his house. 
hmm. the rooms to go stuff that's coming in. And then he bought a TV and he was all proud of himself for buying a TV. <laughs> TV costs so like $89 better. now, you know, t- like TVs a nice black so, screen. <laughs> TVs are so cheap. <laughs> no, you don't understand, Lady K. It was HD. He really right, does so- to Vegas, though, just to your point. So he has something to talk about that's just not the same thing over and over again. Right. Yes, so- he, he should come to Vegas. It would be fun for all of us if he showed up. Well, the only way he gets there is if uh, Vince bankrolls him going to uh, Vegas. <laughs> Which is very possible. Yeah. <laughs> and w- Well, Vince would only do that if Vince was going to be there. Oh, he wants to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, what about uh, John's biker buddy, Norbit, <laughs> that he's been talking about? Yeah, look out, Carl. Yeah. So this guy, so John's got a, a buddy who's uh, who rides a motorcycle, which means he's tough, as you guys know, everyone who rides a motorcycle. So apparently John showed this guy videos of me making fun of him. And he's like, you know, this guy, this guy lives in Cape Coral. And the guy's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Norbit smash. Because <laughs> <laughs> every guy in their 60s always goes straight to violence. I don't know if you yeah. guys knew that. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually the way things uh, work out. Hey, John, it's good to see you. Is anyone trolling you? Show me. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So, well, so for homework next week, does John own a Harley? And yes. did he graffiti Stevie Tomatoes? These are the questions we need answered for sure. We need to get to the bottom of this. Guys, tomorrow on Who Are These Podcasts, the return of Earl David Reed, Yay. EDR, oh, yeah. back on the show. Wait, does Very this mean you're going to call me at the last minute and tell me I need to be on tomorrow? Like last time he was supposed to be on. Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I messaged him uh, a couple of days ago. He's he's definitely going to be there. Uh-huh. Well, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, definitely be on standby for us, Christian. We appreciate that. Uh, so looking forward to getting back into the swing of things. Of course, we didn't do who are these podcasts, our midweek episode this week because we were in the studio and I got uh, deathly sick because of my fucking Dude, the singer in our band. <laughs> the singer in our band. All right. He gets in our, we, we rode down together. It's a little ways. So he gets in my car and he's like, guys, I have allergies acting up. And he's just coughing and all this shit. Fucking so this guy. is going on throughout the day, all day long. Then he gets back in the car. We're driving back. Oh, he, said, our... he said, my wife's, my wife's really sick, but yeah. I, I have allergies. Right. His wife has been very sick for a while. And he goes, I'm not sick. I have allergies. So then we get back in the car and it's me, Andy, and our singer. And he's coughing nonstop. And I just go, dude, it's not allergies. You're sick. And he goes, you, you might be right. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might be right because then I got fucking sick, asshole. <laughs> Thanks for that. Much appreciated. So anyway, it wouldn't have worked out for me to do a show this week because I was... Uh, on my deathbed. I don't get sick yeah. very often. So and I, I was trying to go remote because of that. Now I'm fucking here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm fucking everything up. Get your internet fixed, asshole. <laughs> Spectrum! <laughs> uh, Christian, what do you got going on, buddy? Well, of course, we have the wonderful uh, Who Are These Broadcasters Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on this very YouTube channel with myself and Eric Zane of the Insane Asylum. And in our most recent episode, we introduced people to uh, Long Island's own hot dog hooker and uh, a gentleman who uh, had some legal proceedings whose legal name is indeed D's Nuts. So uh, <laughs> if, if those don't sound interesting to you, you're not going to enjoy the show. But uh, if they do... Check us out. And of course, I have my own podcast, the Blackcast, B L A D T C A S T. All right. Definitely check that out. And also, uh, who are these broadcasters? It has its own feed wherever you get podcasts. So yeah. subscribe to that. It shows up every Wednesday. You can listen to it at your leisure. Thank you. I have to start saying that more often. <laughs> I remember sometimes. So I usually just like, yeah, we're on YouTube. Well, Is no, there any I mean, other way to enjoy the show? I don't know. I, 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 nope. I think. It was a, a weird transition and since my time podcasting. I'm in my ninth year. So weird transition where people were reluctant to go video. And now yeah. some people are just video only. They don't even do yeah. a audio version of their podcast, which I think is crazy. Cause I like yeah. to listen to shows. I have, I can't just yeah. be sitting and staring at my screen all day. I take nothing but shit about bringing video shows to the competition. 
Oh, here well, because, because those are because those are the wrong models. category. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not podcasts. They're somebody's, uh, you know, uh, Instagram page where they're like doing videos. So I think that's the issue, Andy. Yeah, and you bring reality <laughs> shows and call them a podcast. What do you want, <laughs> Andy? What else are you uh, up to these days, buddy? Yeah, all apologies. Podcast.com. Uh, we just did just like everybody else. We covered the Dan Snyder twenty minute apology tour. Uh, I had to break it into two episodes. So we did part one this past week and part two is coming out. I just saw Keenan Thompson addressing it. So I might do that on a mini episode. We also featured uh, Jordan Cheyenne, who's another one of these mommy influencers who tried to make the her uh, son crying over the death of their dog. Uh, oh, a yeah. YouTube episode. So we covered <laughs> that on Patreon and that was That's a lot great. of fun. That's great. Yeah. So the Snyder stuff was that him with Boogie? Did you cover yeah, that? Yeah, the Boogie <laughs> interview. Yes, Blind Mike did, did a great job covering Boogie. We, I'm we surprised. Drove. I'm surprised you did two episodes on Dan Snyder because uh, right before the show, you were talking about how you just didn't think you did anything wrong and you don't know what the fuss is. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's pretty much the whole show. Okay, yeah, yeah, two yeah. hours. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what, what's so wrong about this? <laughs> Who doesn't rub a tween's foot on your face from time to time? What's what's the big deal? Finally, Carl's making some sense. <laughs> yeah. Producer Chris, anything to plug, my friend? Uh, Hackamania.com. See you there. Yes, Hackamania.com. We'll be in Vegas May 31st through June 2nd. I can't stress how much fun this is going to be. Ask anyone who came to Largo, if you go to our Discord uh, we have a show meetup channel in there. Everyone who came to Largo, everyone I've talked to, except for the guy who got kicked out for being uh, blackout drunk, seemed to have a great time at the live show and the night before hanging out at Hogan's. After the show, hanging out at the karaoke bar that we went to, which was Niagara Taps. Yes, Niagara Taps. Dude, that, that whole area we were in was all like Bill's country. I yeah. enjoyed, enjoyed that quite a bit. But uh, yeah, we always have a blast hanging out with everybody at these shows. So come to Vegas. That's going to be next level. I'm really looking forward to that. Hackamania.com. And of course, whoarethese.com is where you can find all things related to who are these podcasts, who are these socials, and who are these broadcasters. So everyone, we really appreciate you hanging out with us on another point, dabble point. And uh, for Christian, producer Chris, and Andy Q Public, I will just say, go gia. Point devil point. A stuttering John Melendez roundtable discussion.